Is the James Webb Telescope working? What is the current state of the James Webb Space Telescope? How soon after its launch will the James Webb Telescope be ready to use? Keep watching to find out all about the James Webb Telescope. In today's video, we're going to talk about the mission of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. Make sure to stay until the end to find out all about the James Webb Telescope. Time says that the person in charge of NASA's biggest space science mission is one of the most influential people in the world. In order of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope program, put Gregory Robinson on the Time 100, the magazine's annual list of the 100 most influential leaders. Robinson is one of the Time 100 honorees for this year, along with people like President Joe Biden and Oprah Winfrey. Robinson is in charge of the Webb Telescope, the best observatory in space, for the next 10 years. Webb will look at every part of the universe's 13.5 billion year history, from our solar system to the farthest galaxies we can see, and everything in between, to help us figure out where we fit in. Robinson joined the team in 2018 and is in charge of the program from NASA's Science Mission Directorate in Washington. In charge of NASA, Bill Nelson said, Greg has been a great leader for NASA's James Webb Space Telescope through all the challenges and amazing successes of this historic mission. Congratulations, Greg, and thank you for all you've done for NASA. Time says that its list honors the impact, innovation, and accomplishments of the most powerful people in the world. John Mather, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics and is the Webb Senior Project Scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, wrote a tribute to Robinson's work for Time. I'm honored to be a Time 100 Robinson. I want to thank an extraordinary team of NASA engineers, scientists, and technicians, our contractor and academic base, and partners from around the world. Robinson has bachelor's degrees in math and electrical engineering from Virginia Union and Howard Universities. Later, he earned an MBA from Averitt University and attended Harvard's Senior Executive Fellows Program. He took LEI's leadership for a Democratic Society course. Robinson has been a NASA engineer, program and project manager, and executive leader for more than 30 years. He teaches graduate level classes at Columbia's School of Professional Studies. Before that, he taught project management at George Washington University. I've had a terrific career with excellent teammates, and I'm thrilled to be part of this first chapter in Webb's science story, Robinson said. Webb will begin a vital scientific trip, and it's astonishing to believe we're near to understanding the universe. After taking off on December 25, 2021, the Webb team had to undergo a scary weeks-long process to get the spacecraft ready to work. During this time, hundreds of parts had to work together perfectly in the harsh environment of space as the spacecraft traveled to its final orbit one million miles from Earth. Webb is the first space telescope to use a large, deployable primary mirror made of 18 pieces and an optical system that has never been seen before. As soon as its science instrument reached the right temperature to work, the team was able to align the telescope. Now, the team is getting the observatory's instruments ready to take the first amazing pictures and spectra of science this summer. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope will be fully operational in just a few weeks. Its mirror segments are perfectly lined up and its scientific instruments are fine-tuned. In-depth science with Webb will start soon after the first observations are made public this summer. The 55 Cancri E, which is covered in lava, and the LHS 3844b, which doesn't have any air, are two hot exoplanets called super-Earths because they are big and made of rocks. Researchers will point Webb's high-precision spectrographs at these planets to learn more about the different types of geology on planets across the galaxy and how rocky planets like Earth changed over time. 55 Cancri E orbits around its sun-like star at less than 1.5 million miles, which is 1 25th of the distance between Mercury and the Sun. One orbit takes less than 18 hours. The planet's day side is thought to be covered in oceans of lava because its surface temperature is much higher than the melting point of most minerals that make up rocks. When a planet is this close to its star, it is thought to be tidally locked, which means that one side always faces the star. So the place on the planet that meets the star the most directly should be the hottest, and the amount of heat coming from the day side shouldn't change much over time. But it doesn't look like this is the case. Observations of 55 Cancri E made by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope show that the hottest part isn't where it directly faces the star. However, the amount of heat seen on the day side does change. 
These observations could be that the planet's atmosphere is constantly changing and moving heat around. 55 Cancri E could have a thick atmosphere dominated by oxygen or nitrogen, said Ray New Hugh of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. Hugh is in charge of a team that will use Webb's Near Infrared Camera, or NIR Cam, and Mid Infrared Instruments, or MIRI, to capture the thermal emissions spectrum of the planet's dayside. If it has an atmosphere, Webb has the sensitivity and wavelength range to find it and figure out what it is made of, Hugh said. Another interesting possibility is that 55 Cancri E is not locked in place by the tides. Instead, it might be like Mercury, which rotates three times every two orbits. It is called a 3 to 2 resonance. Because of this, the planet would have a cycle of day and night. That could explain why the hottest part of the planet is moved, said Alexis Brandeker, who leads another team of researchers studying the planet at Stockholm University. It would take time for the surface to heat up, just like it does on Earth. Not at noon, but in the afternoon, it would be the hottest. Brandeker's team plans to test his theory by using the NIR cam to measure the heat coming from the lit side of 55 Cancri E during four different orbits. If the planet has a 3 to 2 resonance, they will look at each hemisphere twice and should be able to see any differences between them. In this case, the surface would heat up, melt, and even evaporate during the day, creating a very thin atmosphere that Webb could see. In the evening, the vapor would cool and condense into drops of lava, which would rain back down to the surface. When night came, the drops would harden into rock. 55 Cancri E will teach us about the strange geology of a world covered in lava, but LHS 3844b gives us a unique chance to study the solid rock on the surface of an exoplanet. Like 55 Cancri E, LHS 3844b orbits very close to its star. It takes 11 hours for it to complete one turn. But because its star is small and cool, the planet is not hot enough for its surface to be molten. Also, Spitzer's observations show that the world probably doesn't have a great atmosphere. We won't be able to take a picture of LHS 3844b surface with Webb, but since it doesn't have an atmosphere to hide it, we can study it with spectroscopy. Laura Creedberg at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy said, It turns out that different types of rocks have different spectra. With your own eyes, you can see that granite is lighter than basalt. The infrared light that rocks give off is also different in the same way. Creedberg's team will use MIRI to get the thermal emission spectrum of the day side of LHS 3844b. They will then compare it to the spectra of known rocks, like basalt and granite, to figure out what it is made of. If there are volcanoes on the planet, the spectrum could also show that small amounts of volcanic gases are there. These observations are important for more than just two of the over 5,000 confirmed exoplanets in our galaxy. Creedberg said they will give us great new ideas about planets like Earth in general and help us figure out what the early Earth might have been like when it was hot like these planets are now. As part of Webb's Cycle 1 General Observers Program, these observations of 55 Cancri E and LHS 3844b will be made. Used a dual anonymous review system to choose the General Observers programs. It is the same system used to decide which projects would get time on Hubble. The James Webb Space Telescope is the best place on Earth to study space. Webb will figure out how things work in our solar system, look for faraway worlds around other stars, and figure out how the universe and our place in it work. Webb is a joint project between NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. Leave a big thumbs up on this video if you found it interesting and exciting. And if you are new to our channel, subscribe and turn on your post notification to get updates. See you in the next video.